So welcome to another uh, Edge Cause Community Conversation. I'm excited to be here today with Audrey Waters, whose new book is about teaching mach machines and a history of personalized learning. And I love the book. I'm a fan of, of your work. I think your voice is so important. I'm curious, you know, we all have our stories before the stories, but what's your story with educational technology? Oh, this is such a great question. And thank you so much for having me, um, having me on your show, John. So, you know, it's really hard to sort of pinpoint one particular moment for me. I mean, I have a very, um, I don't know, my, my whole educational history is a little bit of this, a little bit of that. I, I'm from Wyoming, but my mom is British. And when I was in fourth grade, for example, she decided that it would be fun for me if I went to live with my aunt and uncle in England um, for part of the year and I went to school there. So I've had, and I went to high school, ended up being sent away to school in England in high school. So I've had a lot of different education experiences in general. And I think that it, even before we talk about, think about technology, I think that that has helped me see the ways in which um, education is something that is really, connected to society and culture and it's not natural so to speak it's organized in different ways with different goals and different practices and so really my whole educational history has sort of been this observer about what we do when we do this thing called school and i'm a certain age so i suppose the you know the personal computer was around when i was a kid but i have to say it really uh, our schools in Wyoming, we didn't have a lot of opportunities to use computers. I was very fortunate that my grandfather decided um, when the Apple IIe came out that he was going to invest in my brother and my future and got a computer for us at home. But really, ed tech wasn't something I started to think about until graduate school, interestingly enough, when in the late 90s at the University of Oregon, we received word on high that we needed to start putting all of our course material into this new software that the school had adopted called Blackboard. <laughs> and so, you know, and so really my first experiences teaching college as a grad student were entwined with this mandate to use to use a particular piece of ed tech. And so I've been thinking about the ways in which Again, these practices have evolved, these technologies have evolved for a very long time, long before I sort of turned my focus to ed tech. I, I have two thoughts while you were talking. One is having a very clear recollection in the 90s, which is the decade I think we're referring to here, um, being, in a, being in a meeting room. And at that time I had what I still think was the dream job. I was half time teaching English and half time being an evangelist for ed tech at that sort of breathless time where, you know, telling a faculty member, you could use Excel for your grade book and it will make everything. So you mean I can do that? You mean I, it was, it was kind of a heady time. Uh, but I also remember being in a, in a meeting room where a bunch of people kept saying the phrase, we need to throw up more courses on the web <laughs> and then nobody, and I kept looking around to see if any anybody caught the um, irony of that and, and, and it wasn't a time for, for catching irony, I think, that decade. I think so. um, yeah, that moment of enthusiasm is so interesting because, I mean, another job I had at the time was I worked um, at the University of Oregon. They ran, they had a conference management department that did continuing ed and they ran conferences, mostly ed education conferences. And there was this little conference, a little national conference, national education computing conference. And it was pretty small. A couple of thousand people went every year. But in 97, they held it in Seattle. And the keynote speaker was this fellow, Bill Gates. And suddenly it went from a very small conference to like seven or 8,000 people showed up. And so I just remember that all of a sudden moment in the late 90s, it felt like people were like, felt compelled to sort of get on board with this ed tech thing, even though I think teachers, especially innovative teachers had been using it for decades, really, that it really felt that there was this sense that, wow, we all have to get on board. 